Welcome to the Basement Basement Boys Podcast. I am Chris Gray. That is Devin Mitchell. And Yo. we're going to jump right into it as usual. First on the list, I'm fucking pissed, all right? <laughs> Why once you again, pissed? Once again, the Jets have to ruin a perfectly good fucking thing. We have who might be the best safety in the fucking league, and somehow... The Jets fuck it up again. <laughs> oh my god. Jamal Adams has come out um officially requesting a trade. As you can tell I'm fucking thrilled about it. Um Yeah, he wants a new contract, but I also get the Jets. <sighs> See, this is the part of me that makes me the most mad about it is because I get it on both sides. I get it from the Jets' perspective, and I get it from Jamal's perspective. Jamal is like, look, I'm the best, one of the best, if not the best safety in the league right now. I want to be compensated for it. I could get injured tomorrow, and, you know, I'm fucked. Um, But at the same time, the Jets are just like, hey, like, I think we still have another, uh, yeah, five years rookie deal, so... Yep. We still have him under control for another two years. Maybe next year, because then you'll be due, even though we have you for another year. Like, we'll give you, like, we'll throw you that bone or whatever. But give us a chance. Give us a chance to win. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. bring in some weapons, which is what he's been asking people to do. Um, So I completely get it from their side as well. But I just don't know how every time the Jets get someone who's worth the shit either they don't develop them right or they piss them off enough to the point where they want out i feel like it happens every time and that's why our teams are always mediocre as fuck <sighs> yeah uh i mean like you and i'm sure everybody else i see both sides i understand you know the owners are looking at this being like hey we have you, my fault, not the owners, let's be real. It's Joe Douglas in the GM, as a GM. And he's sitting there being like, we have a great pro ball safety right now under under control for two more years. It's rare to offer a third-year deal, I mean, a third-year, ex, an extension after the third year. Like, you look at players like Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, they, I believe they had to wait till like year four before they even began negotiating any sort of extension. And those guys were, whew, do not want to be the, held in that ball when they're coming because they're going to put you in the ground. But just looking up real quick, this year he's set to make a base salary of $825,000 and a signing bonus of $3.582.40. I'm sorry, and forty two and forty dollars. Like that's nothing to that's nothing to sneeze at. That's some pretty good money. But I also I also agree with Jam I understand where Jamal's coming from and saying that, yo, he's putting up great numbers, lines up almost everywhere in the defense, is basically the heart and soul of that team, and he's just looking to get paid what he's worth. Now and, personally sorry? And just In perspective, like, a defensive, like, especially on defense, where you're taking all those big hits, your window is very small. Right. Some of the best safeties and linebackers of all time have, have like, eight-year careers. Right. Now, I don't personally agree, though, with the timing of everything coming out. Because normally, in the normal world, this is the dog days of summer. You got teams that are doing... OTAs, mini camps, getting ready, finalizing the roster. Where's really the need for a team to grab a safety right now? The best time would have been to come out before the draft if you're Jamal and been like, hey, I want to be traded now or at some point at the start of the season when the team when you can get the most money at 
that you're um that you're seeking. I mean, he was hinting at it then too, though. He, he wasn't. Was, he but... wasn't like dead set like now, but. That's the thing I think that did him wrong was that like he was just like I'll 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 play. You know, I'll I'll play, you know, and kind of like wavering, but like I kind of want to be traded, but if I get my money, I'll stay here. But I feel like if he had flat out came out saying I want to be traded, he would have the Jets would have been able to have an easier chance of finding a trade partner for him. And have hey. you seen the t- Sorry. There you go. I was going to say, have you seen the teams that he wants to be traded to? Yes. I have the list right here, actually. Yo, he's looking at good for him and smart for him, you know, looking at playoff caliber teams that are potentially one or two pieces away from winning. Yeah, his number one team was the Ravens. Then he goes to the Cowboys, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, the 49ers, the Seattle Seahawks, the Houston Texans, the Eagles the Bucks, like all teams that are in the mix at the very least. Yep. Um, I'm, who doesn't yeah, want to go to the Bucks? Like everyone wants to play with Tom Brady and the Bucks. Every, he, everyone wants to go and play with uh, Lamar Jackson in, Bal- in Baltimore right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cowboys obviously he- want might be the most talented team in the league and Jerry Jones wants the fuck out of Jamal Adams. What are you gonna and say? I think he grew up in Dallas or around Dallas, so like he grew up as a Cowboys fan, I think. I think so too. Um Kansas City Chiefs. I as much as I don't think that one's gonna happen because I don't think they have the cap space for it. Uh the 49ers also in the Super Bowl. Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson always have a good team. Mm-hmm. Um, Texans, Deshaun Watson finally starting to prove that he's um, this elite level quarterback that he has been saying he was the whole time. Yep. Um, the Eagles. The Eagles. I honestly they, think the Eagles are in there because they're an all right team. They're better than the Jets, and they have the cap room. But I don't. I'm not sure if they're just Jamal Adams away from a, another Super Bowl run. Well, they have like no secondary. If I remember correctly, their secondary is either always banged up and hurt, where they're legit pulling dudes off the bench. I mean, off the street, being like, "Hey, you look like you could cover." you know, some receivers, can you play for us? But I feel like that would be a good fit for him just because of the need. But that team is always banged up, and you're right. They're not one player away. They're a couple pieces away. And Carson Wentz has not played a full season, I don't think, except for maybe his rookie year. Yeah, yeah. Whether it be shoulder, uh, ACL, or whatnot. He's just been catching bad breaks. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And then obviously the Bucks. Right. Every everyone's trying to ring chase and go to the Bucks right now, so we can't blame him for that one either. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um a lot of these places he he'd have to take less money. Well, I've heard him say that he's willing to play out if he gets traded, he's willing to play out the rest of his contract. And then negotiate i guess after two years or whenever that team decides to negotiate so basically he just wants out of the jets it's nothing about contracts yeah and he he's salty that like i think we talked about this on the podcast before he he got mad when they got a call about a possibility of a trade for him and the rumors were amari cooper in a second round pick if you don't at least think about that that deal, you're not doing your job as a GM. It just right. so happened to be right after he told him, they like uh, Joe Douglas told him like, no, we're not going to trade you. You're a Jet forever. Right. But when you come out with a deal like that, you're not doing your job if you're not at least entertaining the idea. You gotta look at that. That's that's not that bad of a. That's a pretty good deal. Like you're getting a 
solid number one receiver and a second round pick. So you get, and that was in this year's draft. So you were looking at two second round picks. So you could have either packaged them or use that to help build your roster and grow it and make it better for the future. And both of those things are things that the Jets need right now. Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You know, uh, it's funny that the Texans are on that because if if Jamal had, like, given any inclination that he wanted to be traded and, like, here's a list of teams that, like, earlier, you know, Jets could have tried to get um, DeAndre Hopkins. You saw what he got traded for, for uh, David Johnson, when they made that deal. You think yeah. they want to do a Jamal Adams for a DeAndre Hopkins trade straight up? I don't, I, I don't think the Jets would do that straight up. Um, maybe DeAndre Hopkins and a pick kind of in the Amari Cooper-esque scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think the Jets would have definitely been a player there if that all came to fruition. Like we said, but it didn't. And I just... I really don't want Jamal to leave because I really just do like him as a player. I like him as a leader on the team. But I mean, that's professional do? sports. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder who's the company he keeps around him because apparently his dad also played in the NFL. And I wonder how much influence his dad is having on him. Um, you would think a decent amount, right? I mean, right? Like he's been it. He's been through it before. He's made the roster you know like i wonder if he's like yo jamal look at your numbers this this is the time time yeah strike while the iron's hot because you don't know what next season's gonna bring you don't know like things change all the time so right we don't even know if there is going to be a next season yeah at this point um i guess it's the way to jump into it um yeah you picked it up yeah so I'm sure, as you've seen, uh, Dr. Fauci has come out saying um, there's going to be a likely second spike of COVID-19 around October when it gets to the colder months. And that really spells trouble for football. Yeah, it does. Um, The conversation's happening now that there just might not be any more football at all if this... If it starts looking like this is going to happen, because it pretty much coincides directly with the start of football almost. And there would be no point for them to start just to shut it down. Right. So even even if it starts to look that way, I'm sure they're going to pull the plug. You know, I've been trying to figure out, because with other leagues going on they've been talking about doing hub cities and um i just wonder could you in theory do a hub city with football i i do not think so right each team has 53 men on it then you have the head coach the assistant head coach um the offensive coordinator the defensive coordinator the Offensive line coach, the interior offensive line coach, the quarterbacks coach, the tight end coach, the running backs coach, the defensive line coach, the secondary coach, the linebackers coach, the inside linebackers coach, the outside linebackers coach. It's just such a huge operation to bring around football that I don't see any way you can do a single hub city. And uh, I've been trying to figure out, like, how do you do how would you even deal with the whole travel because, like, granted, yeah, they play once a week, but you're going to, in theory, you would need multiple hub cities because you can't have all the teams in one city and be like, all right, 6 a.m., we're going to start playing, and hopefully by 10 p.m., the last game should be done. I don't think even... I don't think you can even do hub cities in the slightest. Um, not with football. It's just way too many people. I would think it'd have to be their own stadiums, um, with just no fans, obviously. And I believe they worked this schedule out in a way where it's more 
like less travel, like the least amount of travel they could make for each right. team while keeping. Like I, I think they like kept that in mind. Um, but yeah, this this looks real bad for football. And yeah, uh, I just need something. <laughs> With the MLB talks going on right now, the NBA talks going on right now, it's not looking good for any of these leagues. No. And it's just uh, getting worse and worse. And it's funny because, like, when you think about it, all of the other sports out there, like, there is usually some sort of distance going on. And, you know, everyone's been preaching social distancing, you know, staying six feet away. But with football, you're legit running into people. Like, how can you social distance when your job is to tackle Ezekiel Elliott after he's getting the ball for 20 touches a game? Well, I would I would have to believe they would do it kind of the way the UFC is doing it, even though it's much more centralized with the UFC. I think mm-hmm. you'd just be tested before you get on the plane, but tested after you get off the plane, tested when you get into the facility, tested here, tested there. The crew on the plane will get tested, you know? Yeah. All these things. And as um, we start learning more about the disease, the tests, the tests are getting faster, so they can be processed in a matter of, I think, a few hours at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's the only way... I feel like that's the way they would have to go about it. Yeah. Um, but I still, especially if there's a second spike, I don't, I'm not convinced that that's entirely possible. No, no. Football kind of has the benefit of being in the fall, so they could sit back, watch what's going on with baseball, ML, I mean, NBA, NHL, all these other sports. And as they're getting their season ready, they could be like, all right, guys, we've seen what's happening. Let's not do what they're doing. Let's try to figure out if we could get this to work. If not, like you said, let's shut it down now so we can keep the most people safe. And it's just much more cost effective for them to just not even start. Yeah. Like if if they had heated the war- I honestly think if they had heated the warnings earlier, um, the XFL probably wouldn't have gone out of business if they were just like, you know what, we're going to push this back a year with everything going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be fair, none of us were taking it that seriously at the time. No, we all thought it was just going to be like another version of the flu. Or just like any one of the other diseases every year that... Um, is always like the bird flus, the SARS. So like, yeah, people were getting them, but not like we weren't. We weren't having to quarantine in our houses for months at a time. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but here we are once again. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Um, and it also doesn't help anybody's cases that. The teams that have started to open up and started training, there have been some outbreaks among them. Mm-hmm. Um, most notably, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies had to shut down their training camp when five players and three um, just personnel members. Staff members. Right. Were um, tested positive for COVID-19. And with the already very, very shaky MLB trade talks, that is probably the worst case scenario. But we'll get, oh yeah, we'll get more into that a little later in the show. Um, but just other teams affected by this: three Tampa Bay Lightning members. Um, they won't be able to do that hockey. <laughs> Let's do that hockey. Um and then two members of the Angels have tested positive. Just also not a very good sign for baseball. 
baseball, get your act together. Keep your players uh, safe. And then a whopping 23 members of the good old Clemson Tigers, which is fucking... That's bad. Yeah. Especially... Well, like... Especially it's, with the NCAA saying they're not, they're already looking at not having a season if they can't get their students back, let alone right. the teams. And I mean, the number of students that tested positive at Clemson doesn't really surprise me because we all remember when we were in our in the college days, college age. It was a lot of "Don't you tell me what I can and can't do." I'm gonna do whatever the hell I feel like doing, and like exactly, you these guys, they're college athletes. They're thinking, listen, I play for Clemson, the University of Clemson, or is it Clemson University? Whatever, I play for Clemson. Everyone knows me. I'm in the national. I'm in the talk for a national championship. The last couple of years, like I got dogs that are in the NFL right now. Yeah, I'm gonna go out to this party and hang out and have a good time. I don't care about like nothing. I'm healthy. I'm strong, I'm fit, and then you see what's happening. They're and, getting struck down. And Clemson is also one of those schools where the football players are worshipped. Yeah. To also add on to your point. And they're young, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old dudes. I mean, you saw what happened to Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. Just being think- a young dude and uh, got a little bit of mono. <laughs> I think I think he's pretty happy about the mono at this point, though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, I mean all things considered, mono, high five. Yeah, probably lucked out. Um, but that's still a massive number. That also that also speaks to the size of these NCAA teams. I think, I think their active roster after cuts is like 73 or something like that. Oh my goodness. I don't know if that's the exact number, but I'm pretty sure it's in that range. Like, it is a that's lot a of lot. people. That is a lot of people, which is the other thing that I really... NCAA football, I really don't think... I really don't see happening this year, just because it is. they are such massive organizations. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure if you've heard, but a lot of schools have started, like, handing out waivers for players to sign. Basically saying that if they they understand what COVID nineteen is and if they contract it during like the the school um, workouts or whatever it may be, they won't hold the school responsible. Ugh. It's almost like it's almost like if you have to sign a paper to go to something, mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, you sh- could probably die." You probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> but if you do it, it's not our fault. Right. I feel like these organizations wouldn't be working so hard to protect themselves like that if this wasn't a problem. Mm-hmm. But I digress. But you're right, though. Like, it's strongly looking like there might not be a college football season this fall because we got to remember that, yes— these kids out there are going out there and playing a game we all love or whatnot, but the first part of that is students. And if you can't get, you know, the students that aren't on the football team into the dorms and that everyone can get education, then there's no point in playing. And the NCAA has also come out and said they will extend the players, uh, like, the extra year of eligibility Mm -hmm. with everything going on. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know what? Sit back, relax, take the season off. Yep. Get like train, get yourself even better, get your numbers up next year, and then you can go to the NFL. Exactly. When you're that much stronger, that much faster, and that much smarter. And don't have to worry about your whole career going around the drain that by getting a disease that could affect your lung capacity for the rest of your life. Right. Stay in school, kids. Get so, education. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, coronavirus just said, hey, fuck sports. 
and man, we're living in that world book. right now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what to do. Read your coach's playbook and then go read another book. <laughs> All right. Um, getting out of that, we should probably get into the other reason that the MLB is just not fucking going to happen this year, it looks like. Um, the ML, the MLBPA gave out one final um, offer, offer to tr- yeah, to try to come into agreement. They wanted sixty ga- uh, 70 games prorated. The MLB said, no, we are creating a hard line at 60. Um, and it just, once again, it's just, here's an offer we know you're not going to want. Here's an offer we're getting, blah, 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 blah. It's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they're not getting anywhere with it. Every time it's just getting immediately struck down. And while I was at the point where I was on the player sides for most of this, like, even I'm just kind of getting tired of it. Like, I get it. You're taking a huge pay cut by not playing as many games. But especially if this October spike happens, especially if everything else happens, you're not really going to have the opportunity. Because it's dragged out so long, and this is exactly what the MLB wanted. They mm-hmm. don't have the opportunity to play all the games. Right. So, because, like, what are you going to do? Play play 70 games, play 80 games, whatever, and then have a month, a month and a half for your off season for next season? Yeah, that's, I mean, no one would want that because, let's be real, these players want that off season because they need time to relax, see the families, whatever it may be. But baseball, I feel like the whole negotiating process between baseball and the Players Association has been handled poorly. They had time to figure this out. They had a deal in place and then trying to rework it and fix it and, you know, make it better for the players when the owner, I mean, better for the owners and the players are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't try to take our money like we're earning this money you know we're trying to provide it for our families and then this whole back and forth back and forth back and forth it just it's just falling apart right in front of our eyes and unfortunately baseball ain't coming back see that's that's the thing i do blame the owners for is like you said if they if they just came out and said okay we're gonna do a if they just came out and said, hey, we want to do 60 games at full prorated salary from the beginning, I feel like the players would have been like, oh, that's a little shorter than we wanted, but okay. Well, I think the original deal was like 82 games at a full prorated salary. And then they kept the owners kept like trying to um, finagle it and be like, oh, we'll do 48 games at only like half of that. Well, see, that's... That's where I think they messed up is they tried to cut it by another like 35, 40%, whatever it was, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like if they came with the less amount of games, maybe not exactly 48, but if they just came at full prorated, it would have been much better received by the MLBPA. Yeah. And it wouldn't have been such a combative nature where now they don't want to give in. They don't want to make sacrifices for the MLB. They want to just get as much money as they can, Mm -hmm. which is what they would have wanted either way. But I feel like it would have been a much more understood point of, all right, we can only really get 60, 70 games in whatever it is from the beginning. We can't get the full 82, especially if we want to have any type of off season, especially because, um, even if, especially if they're looking at like now they're saying they're looking at like the bubble city type of idea and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if they were traveling with how hard it is to travel right now, an 82 game season might've just not been achievable no matter what. Right. 
So if they came right away with the full prorated at whatever number you want to give it, the MLBPA would have taken it into consideration more because they don't want to, especially because they didn't want to give in for that because they know they're trying to work the salary cap idea in with it. Right. So I think that's where the owners fucked up. I think they tried to take advantage of a terrible situation that is Mm -hmm. COVID-19 right now. And it backfired in their faces, backfired in our faces. And here we are just sitting at home waiting for baseball. I still don't really blame the players for this. I just blame them that at this point, it's just like, you keep you keep fighting for these extra games. What you already got your prorated, mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong, super happy for that. And I would love for you to have more games, but you're getting to the point where you can't, you don't have the time anymore to fit in all these games and still have an off season and be able to to rest and then go jump back into another 162 game season. Right, unless they would be willing to do. The only way I could feasibly see them getting the same amount of off season would be if they did like double headers every other game but that just opens you up to more injuries and more risk that is something i've also heard being floated around too and i think that's on the player side just oh, to really? try to fit just to try to fit in more games but i don't know if that's the best idea personally i, I don't think it's a good idea cuz like unless you're willing to like expand the roster and essentially carry 30, 36 players so you can have, like, your day team and your night team and mix it up like that. Maybe we could do that that way, but realistically, like, it ain't happening. That's, no, that's just risk, too much risk for the players. Um, In my I personal could, opinion. I could see them doing that, especially especially with, like, the older guys who who can't, like sustain it as long anymore. Like I think the younger guys might have to take some of the workhorseness with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Cespedes. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, he's probably home at that ranch, possibly chasing more boars or pigs or whatever it was that messed up his ankle this time. So, uh, yeah, maybe we need to get him back on a roster. Get him into a team facility. Wrestling boar, stepping in potholes. <laughs> you know. Doing it all, that Cespedes. Yep. <laughs> Doing it all. And this was really supposed to be the Yankees' year, too. It should have been. I mean... We, we picked up Garrett Cole. The one thing that every Yankee fan has been wanting for the past three, four years now... Since this young core has started to build up. Mm-hmm. Starting pitching. But you also look at what that team was able to do last season with all the injuries they were dealt with. And to come, what, they made it to the um, ALDS, I believe? Yes. Yeah. They were right there. Just imagine that team healthy, ready to go. Shit, they might be walking around with uh, a little bling on their pants. Uh, that last season just really upset me because I knew CC wasn't going to get another one. Yeah. And I, I wanted that so bad for him. You can't help but love CC. I mean, he's a, he's a good dude. Kind of want to hang out and have a beer with him. Yeah. At least now... He's been talking about he's going to be able to lose the weight, which will be better for um, the knee or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's good for him. And then the only other thing I got, Dev, is um, I'm going to let you take us away on this one. These professional teams and collegiate teams getting rid of giant pieces of shit. Yeah. Um, props to these teams that have looked at their past and been like, wow, this our owner, 
or you know whoever we name these buildings after are some horrible people like we should not be worshiping them first one that came broke out was uh redskins owner the original owner who had moved the team from boston to dc area and was famously racist refused to integrate his team up until like the 1960s when i believe it was like congress had to actually get in because they were like yo you want to play in washington dc it's federally owned you can't you have to integrate like it's not like this is just not cool they finally removed his schedule i mean schedule his statue off of um out front of the stat of their stadium at rfk minnesota twins followed suit and their previous owner whatever the hell his name is charles griffin i think he was uh, famous for moving – he moved the team to Minneapolis because it was more of a – as his words, a harder-working white-collar t- white collar city and just didn't want it around as many black black people. They removed his schedule, statue. Wow, why do I keep doing that? I'm sorry. University of Texas football players have come out, and a couple of the – good number of them have actually been like, hey – we're not going to help you guys recruit anybody until you change certain things. You know, like, you guys got to get rid of, you know, the dorms and the halls named after Confederate soldiers and knowing racists. And the university has been open and they're in talks. They're removing the – they're – song they play at the end of the games, the Eye of Texas, which apparently is incredibly racist. But what would you expect coming from Texas, you know? So it's just, like, good to see that these players and these teams are all woke and are like, hey, listen, let's get rid of the bad and the horrible owners of the past and stuff, and let's build up the future and make it that everyone can feel safe playing in here and come to these games. Of how the Washington Red Skins are talking about <laughs> you know yeah. what we st- we stand with people of color and we're going to take this guy down. Not that it's bad that they've taken the guy down, not that he doesn't deserve it, but yes, we the Washington Red Skins we the Washington <sighs> racial slurs. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's crazy cuz let's be real, they've have been there's been so much controversy I think within this last century. Like I think since I started getting into football I've heard, oh, is this the year the Redskins change their name? Is, you know, like this petition going out to change formally change Redskins names and then Whoever the owner is, is it Dan Snyder? Is that him? Uh, I think so. He's been like, nah, we're not going to change the name. You know, it's like our team history. I think like even, I guess, federal government has been like, guys really need to change your names. And they're like, nah, not yet. But, hey, maybe this is uh, the wake-up call and next season it's going to be the Washington new name right there a lot of people are saying they should change it to the washington indians and at the Mm. same time yeah it's just like wait no no (laughs) no (laughs) no people you're gonna change it for one thing which i mean i guess I, i guess like a like a stereotype like misnaming because the guy's stupid and thought he sailed to india and not a whole new place name is better than an actual like racial slur. I mean, I guess you can say that's an improvement, but what the, like, what are we doing here? I mean, look at the Cleveland Indians. They've changed their mascot. Uh, whatever his name was, chief, something, something. Cause there was this a big character, character, char- character. There we go. Of a Indian. And now they just got to see. So it was, if you th- it was basically red faced. Yeah, yeah. So if you, can or, see I don't what even the, know if that's what it's called, but but that's... yeah. <laughs> but if you see what the Cleveland Indians are doing, like 
don't be like, hey, let's take a page out of their playbook when they're already five books ahead of you. You know, why don't you catch up to them? And I don't know, like, if you want to keep, like, the Native American theme around, I don't know, maybe you call themselves the Washington Natives. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say Chiefs, but you know that one's already taken. Yeah, because at least, at least a chief is something in that culture. You know what I mean? Right. Or the Washington Warriors. I don't know. I'm, I'm spitballing yeah. right now. Anything like that, you can still keep that same kind of vibe. You don't have to change everything. You know what I mean? Right. Or you pick a certain tribe, and you know you're the Washington. Um, Cherokees or Washington Iroquois or Algonquins yeah. or... or like whichever tribe Apaches. was like the biggest, baddest motherfuckers around. Maybe you incorporate that tribe and you're like, hey, look, we're changing. We woke up and now we want to embrace this tribe and bring awareness to uh to Native Americans. I don't think that's going to happen because... First of all, if they did that, I feel like every Native American out there, as far as, um, like, wouldn't want their tribe's name to be used because you spent so long calling yourself this one thing. Why would yeah. we? Why would we offer ourselves up to be associated with you? Um, And if they try to do it without that particular tribe's permission. permission, per se, I feel like that also looks a little tasteless. Yeah. I think they should just change it all together, to be honest. Um, just completely away from anything that has to do with the Native American people and just, I don't know, do an animal like everyone else, something. Washington... I don't even like I I don't even care what they change it to. I'm not Washington Weasels. The Washington <laughs> Weasels. That's a new campaign. We're starting it right here. Comment Has... down below. Hashtag Washington Weasels. We're gonna get this shit started right now. Here we go. But yeah. And I mean and uh, hey, it's DC, so it fits. It's just full of fucking weasels. <laughs> <laughs> It, wor it works out for everything. And one incredibly old, incredibly racist turtle named Mitch McConnell. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Yo, don't don't, asso don't associate the turtles with him, okay? <laughs> Fuck, I almost wore my Ninja Turtle shirt, too. Oh, I'm sorry. I would, I would have never equated it to them. Not the Ninja <laughs> Turtles, dude. No, they're, they're legit. Turtle power. But, All right, Joe. And, but just keep it on that same type of topic. Um, I think it's great what um, the Minnesota teams are doing. I think it's great what the college students in Texas are doing. Um, I think um, the NCAA has also come out, or no, the SEC, I'm sorry, has come out and said if the whole state of Mississippi doesn't change oh, their yeah. flag doesn't change their flag, they might pull the SEC events out of Mississippi. Yo, Mississippi would go insane if that happens. And that's that's two of the biggest teams in SEC, Ole Miss and University of Mississippi. Yeah, that's one. Whatever. Um. But yeah, like, they love their sports down in Mississippi and I mean, Mississippi is notoriously notoriously known for being racist. You know, that they have a very race racist, very very racial history. But yeah, like they got the little Confederate Lee still up in the corner of the flag and you know, props to NC SEC for being like, Hey, Mississippi, no more. No more. Can if you can take that shit out of NASCAR, you can take that shit out of anywhere, son. Right. Um, and also, why are you wa waving around the flag of a fucking loser? As, <laughs> like, yeah. And let's be real. 
It was only for like what five years, four years, and four. y'all mother y'all motherfuckers want to talk about participation trophies. Y'all want to talk <laughs> about participation trophies. I'm sorry, y'all. They're naming Fords after losers. Let's let's think about that. Ford stadiums, a whole bunch of stuff are all named after losers. There you go. And the people who defend who are defending it also losers. So it kind of makes sense. A loser for a loser. There you go. So you got a you got anything else going on here, Dev? How's life? Yeah. Lovely day. Too bad I gotta go to work, make some money. Ah. Alrighty. Well, that's about all I got too. So. <laughs> Once again, hey, but in the real though, just want to give a big shout out to everyone that watches, listens, likes, clicks on our stuff. And if you'd like to see more, please tell your friends and don't forget to subscribe so you can get all the latest videos, all the notifications we make directly to whatever tablet, cell phone, or laptop you use. You know, hit that little bell icon, it'll even ding for you every time we post something. It'll be great. Ding. We also got merch. You can head to our Facebook, facebook.com slash basement boys pod. Hit the shop now button and check out our less designs than we had last week. <laughs> because apparently I'm not the best designer because some of the designs got rejected by our printer but that's okay <laughs> it, it, it's all right we, we growing we growing and we get more don't worry more coming at you very very soon and don't forget a little teaser for y'all we're gonna have a website at some point so be on the lookout for that too and we'll get around to that one when we get around to that one <laughs> i said at some point <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been experiencing a little bit of uh, struggles with that one, but we're working on it. We're getting there. It's all in the process. Um, yeah, check us out: Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Anyway, we are the Basement Boys. This has been the Basement Boys podcast. Chris Gray, Devin Mitchell. See ya. Jesus. <laughs>